Our next speaker, Emanuel Wenger, colleague of mine of the Austrian Academy of Sciences. He, a long time ago, studied uh, mathematics and computer sciences and for 40 years worked at uh, our academy. I don't have to say it, he is the coordinator of the Bernstein Consortium and let me say the soul of the whole system. It wouldn't go on without his enthusiasm. And he's also a member of the Council of the IPH, of the Association of the International Paper Historians. There's also a big conference this summer in Austria, if you want to take part. Uh, Emanuel is someone who's interested in almost everything, but especially in computer graphics, scientific visualization, paper history, watermark databases, and in jazz music. So everyone knows him, so let's start. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Maria. Uh, when I prepared this presentation, I had another title. Uh, it was Old Wine and New Bottles. But then soon I recognized that another person whom I don't know has the copyrights for this, so I, I changed it to Unpublished Watermark Collections. So watermark studies are done already for some hundreds of years. Maybe one of the first was Gotthelf Fischer von Waldheim, a German natural scientist who worked mostly in Moscow, and he wrote a history of printed books, already 1804. And in this history, he, he wrote that with the help of watermarks, the age of a document can be guessed. So we have at least more than 200 years of studying watermarks. And uh, Result or the output of this is enormous. There are a lot of single publications where you can find something about watermarks. We have a long list of catalogs uh, going back to the, the 19th century, things already, the Songi, Prike, Likachev, you may know all, uh, all these names. Um, there's also a website um, which I'm managing. Uh, originally, it was done by Alois Heidinger about watermark catalogs, there are even such catalogs in, uh, there are catalogs in many languages. Uh, there's even one from Iran, from Tehran, from the archive there, just recently published. And since a couple of years we have watermark databases, but still there is a lot of material which was collected, uh, researched, this 200 years which has not been published. This remained unpublished. Uh, the reasons are different. Sometimes there was no money. Uh, in some other cases, uh, the scientist, the researcher couldn't finish it, uh, or it was, it was not uh, considered to be worth enough to be published. <clears throat> but nowadays we have, uh, thanks to the internet, uh, to digital digitalization, new and more easy way, more cheap ways to publish that stuff. Uh, there is a long, uh, there are many people who contributed to watermark research. Uh, most of you, you will know the name, only at, at the end, at the bottom of this site, you see um, a link to a website in Wikipedia. Um, um, and there, um, Frieda Schmidt from Germany and me made a list of watermark ref uh, researchers. It's only in German, but it's only containing names and links to uh, Wikipedia pages or to the German National Library. So my <clears throat> talk will, or I, I will speak about two groups of published, unpublished uh, things uh, about watermarks. The first four, you can see here, the Thongi brothers, Priki, Picard, Moshin, they were successful, or more or less successful, to publish parts of their uh, collections, parts of their research, but uh, there still remains uh, not everything uh, of these famous uh, heroes of watermark research uh, are published. And there are a couple of um, collections of things from, from others like from Joseph Kemen, Ludwig von Bullingen, Theodor Gerardi, or uh, three 
uh, Russian researchers, Dich, Dichomirov, Shepkin, Indianova, uh, this was not published at all. I do not need to speak here about Songhe because I'm sure uh, Livia will speak about it, so I will skip this. Uh, it's only for completeness here because also the Songhe um, collection, the, the Songhe watermarks, were not published for a long time. It needed uh, yeah, 60, 70, 80 years until the first publication uh, was done in the Monumenta series and Fortunately, we have the Federigoni Foundation who could get the material and now they are publishing it in the Corpus Catarum Fabrianum. So, uh, also this I can skip or can uh, handle quite fast because uh, yesterday we heard uh, about uh, Briquet. Uh, so on, only shortly uh, the, there are approximately 29,000 tracings which remained unpublished. Uh, somehow the, uh, the Gravel Watermark Archive got them uh, and they published some of them, 5,000 and something. Uh, and uh, since a few weeks, uh, the Gravel Watermark Archive is under my control, so uh, Gravel shifted it to the memory of paper.au and now I can take care I also have to, to update and uh, to change things. We also heard about uh, Brick Reloaded because this is also somehow connected with unpublished stuff. So this I can also skip. <coughs> and now let's go to Gerhard Picard. The Germans say Picard or... It was his usual name, Picard, but he didn't like it, so it made a French version, Picard. So, <laughs> yeah, so he, he was an amazing collector of watermarks, maybe the, uh, he has collected the, the biggest quantity uh, of watermarks, and 92,000 uh, of his watermarks he has transferred uh, onto file cards, which you can see on the left side down, and they were stored in big filling boxes in Stuttgart in the Hauptstaatsarchiv. But this was it, so this was really not so easy available. You had to go to Stuttgart and to uh, get access to, to this stuff. Uh, besides this, uh, he managed to publish 17 books, the so-called Findbücher, and they contained 44,497 watermarks. The, the file cards were uh, digitized in a huge project Picard Online, which was approximately uh, a, a German uh, science foundation project between 2002 and 2006. And uh, thanks to this project, I think without this project, we would not have gotten the funding for the Bernstein project. Because at th this time, there were only, at least in Europe, four databases uh, online and uh, the only one which really had a big quantity was this Picard with 92,000. So this was more than 80 or 90 percent of the uh, material available. <clears throat> so thanks to Picard Online, we, uh, we got the, the, the version project funded. Nowadays, Picard Online is a part of the Wasserzeichen uh, Information System, Wasser Watermark Information System, and there you can f find all the 92,000 uh, scanned and described uh, watermarks. But nevertheless, and this is, goes back uh, especially to research of Alois Heidinger, uh, who found out that more than 30,000 uh, watermarks which uh, Picard has uh, sketched were not transferred to the, to the cards. Uh, only to, to show some, some, some numbers, among the whole quantity um, that Picard has um, researched were between 14 and 15,000 watermarks from Italy. From these Italian watermarks, uh, he put 7,778 on, on the cards. 
Additionally, 3,750 are in the books, which are not in the cards. But nevertheless, if you add uh, these two numbers, there are more than 2,000 unpublished Italian uh, watermarks. So, really, for me, a very amazing person was Vladimir Alexeyevich Moshin. He was a Russian historian, born in St. Petersburg, a philologist and a priest, which, was, which made his life quite complicated, let's say it like this. Yeah. Um, just recently, two, three years, his biography, uh, his autobiography was published, but unfortunately only in Serbian language. So he grew up in St. Petersburg, then when the revolution came, he escaped from there, he went to, the, uh, to Yugoslavia at this time. Yugoslavia was a monarchy, so a king there, but then after the Second World War, there came Tito and another socialist uh, regime, and he got again problems because he was priest. He was uh, sometime even head of the National Archive in, in Zagreb, then from there he was removed to Belgrade and then to Skopje, where he uh, then uh, died. He was successful to publish three or, or at least two big uh, watermark catalogs. One has two volumes. These are the watermarks of the 13th and the 14th century, published in Zagreb, 1957. And another volume, most of you will know, are about the anchor watermarks. These were 2,847 uh, anchors, which were published in 1973. But besides this, uh, we found just recently, with the help of, of uh, a colleague from, from Zagreb, that in the archive of the Croatian Academy of Sciences are uh, huge boxes with unpublished watermarks from Moshin. Because he had prepared to uh, make other catalogs with watermarks from the 15th to the 19th century. And there are more than 5,000 such tracings on small sheets, which you can see here in several boxes. This is the, the, fo the full collection of it. And uh, I'm sure there's also very interesting and amazing uh, material in it. And yeah, I hope that in future we can do something with this. Another person, is Grof Josef Kemen. Grof means, uh, okay, I've put this name uh, in, in front because this is a title, an aristocratic title, and in Austria and Hungary, these titles are very important, so it thinks, yeah. He was also a very interesting person, a historian. He was member of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. He was founding member even of the Austrian Academy of Sciences and of and not founding member because the French Academy is much older, and a member of the French Academy of Sciences. And he wrote a history of Transylvania. But this history is very controversial. It's very well accepted by the Hungarians and the opposite is by the Romanians. Because he, what he did is he was making some falsification of some documents, stuff like this. But nevertheless, for his history of Transylvania, he was also collecting watermarks. Uh, already in the first half of the 19th century. And finally, he had finished his work on watermarks uh, in the year 1844. And with three volumes containing 1,000 500 watermarks. It was more or less ready for publishing, but then he got sick and things like this, and it wasn't published at all. And it remained in the archive of the Romanian Academy of Sciences. And it's really, uh, I'm really surprised that it was never thrown away because Romania had a strange history changing uh, of this, and especially because his work is not appreciated in Romania, only in Hungary. But somehow this survived and uh, we found it. Uh, and just recently, we started at the uh, 1st of January. I have a project with the university in Cluj and we, are, we have already uh, digitized the full collection 
uh, what Kamen did. Uh, and don't be surprised, the Y at the end is not pronounced in, uh, in, in Hungarian and things like this. So Kamen, not Kameni, uh, he uh, put each watermark on a separate sheet in true scale. So he, he made a sketch of it in a true scale. And the information he has added, which you can see on top there, uh, is in Latin language, handwritten and gives the information about the document, about uh, which is holding the watermark, the date of the document, the content, the origin. <clears throat> so we digitized it already. You can see also, therefore, the scale on, uh, on the left side. And so we have approximately 1,500 such pages. And this is a project which is running two years and will be also a part in the uh, standings. <clears throat> Another person is Ludwig van Bullingen. He was a German uh, clergyman and scholar of letterpress printing in Cologne. And during his life, he has collected, uh, or he, he could uh, collect a huge amount of incunable manuscripts and printed books. Uh, and before he died, he donated all these materials to the, the city of Cologne. So it went to the archive of Cologne. For his studies, he was also looking at the watermarks because it was already quite well known the watermarks are uh, important for studying of uh, especially un, uh, undated documents. And But what he did is he made um, an album. Uh, this album contains approximately 500 paper fragments, each bearing a watermark. But what he did is, nowadays, maybe not all the library's archive would allow this, he cut it, the watermark out, yeah, uh, from the original manuscript, uh, fixed it in a book, and uh, traced it over with a pen to articulate the design. So maybe you can see it here, uh, approximately. Uh, so these are, really the these are really the original watermarks uh, and uh, with, with this is sketch over. So I think nowadays he couldn't do this at all, but he did this. And luckily, this, this uh, watermark album was not part of his collection so it did not uh, go to the, um, to the archive of Cologne. It was sold some, to somebody and made a long way. And nowadays, it's in the National Gallery of Victoria in Melbourne, Australia. And just, just recently, we started a project with Louis Wilson uh, from the National Gallery uh, to digitize all these watermarks, uh, to describe them, uh, and to, to add all the information which also is in this book. So uh, on the memory of paper things, uh, if you add Bullingen, uh, then you, you get this. <clears throat> and this is uh, how one, one of the pages looks like. So this is all, also, uh, this is already, uh, it's a work in progress. So far, um, Louis Wilson has only done 73 watermarks, but just recently, last day, I got 150 more, so maybe in one week there will be already close to 200 watermarks from this collection there. And here I want to show you something which, uh, yeah, fortunately, this Bullingen uh, watermark catalog or, or things survived because the, the incunable and all his collection which he donated to the city of Cologne was more or less destroyed by a, a horrible disaster. Maybe you have heard uh, about, uh, it was in the year 2009, when the, the archive of the city of Cologne uh, collapsed, uh, more or less was, was destroyed. There were, I think, 200 or 300 kilometers of shelves uh, and the bad thing also was, uh, um, the reason was the building of, of um, underground of a metro. So this collapsed. 
and it's close to the River Rhine, and so water came in, and uh, it is yeah uh, really uh, a, a big loss because it was one of the only state archives which more or less survived even the Second World War without any damage and things like this, and then this disaster uh, made this. I, I visited uh, the place four years ago, something like this, uh, and spoke there with the conservators, and they say, okay, the only advantage of it is that generation of conservators will have work because <laughs> of this, yeah? Because all the material was collected, deep frozen, and put to some very special places too, yeah. So, so far about the Bullingen things, yeah. Another collection, uh, um, and uh, he was also a very important watermark researcher, Theodor Gerardi. Uh, he was a German geodesist, uh, geodesist and uh, okay, paper historian, watermark and incunabulous researcher. He was one of the co-founders of the IPH, of the International Association of Paper Historians. I'm sure you know all this inst institution. And he was also founder of the Gauss Society, Gauss, the famous mathematician. So he studied incunables. He wrote a lot of papers about dating, localization of manuscripts by watermarks, uh, how to record watermarks, classification of watermarks. So he has a, has a, a long bibliography, what he did. Uh, and he also was one of the first who came with the idea to make a watermark database. Uh, but, and he also collected a lot of watermarks, approximately 15,000, but they were never published. His collection went to the KB, to the National Library of the Netherlands, and it's stored there. And the watermarks are in many different ways how they are uh, recorded. Among them are a lot of such microfilms, which you can see here. So um, I am coming close to, the, to my end. So uh, also, I have a long relation to the State Historical Museum in Moscow, in Russia. Uh, the Russians also have a long tradition for watermark research. Uh, and in this historical museum, there are uh, three quite big un unpublished collections. Uh, one is from Nikolai Ivanovich Tikhomirov, yeah, and so you can, I only want to show you shortly how this looks like. Um, there are a lot of uh, watermark tracing and sheets on this, and uh, he had also prepared this for publication, but it never was done. Then uh, Vyacheslav Nikolaevich Skepin, Skepkin, so he especially wanted to uh, add watermarks from Russia, from Russian public, from Russian uh, paper mills, because in most of the catalog, or none of the catalogs, more or less, were such watermarks. Especially also in the Likashev catalog, are missing this watermark. So he collected approximately two, 1,200 and put it also, as you can see on the right side. In, uh, in a kind of, uh, not book, yeah, a book, things like this. And uh, last but not least, uh, it's uh, Tatiana Vladimirovna Dianova. She could publish a lot of watermark catalogs, but still more than half of her work is unpublished. Uh, so there, there's also a lot of work to do and hopefully I will have a chance to, to work uh, together with them. Okay, so uh, this is what I wanted to tell, and uh, soon uh, I'm also preparing, since a couple of years, a website where I want to uh, give the, this list and some, some more about unpublished uh, stuff like this, because I think it's important that it's somehow written down and that this material is not disappearing or thrown away because nobody takes care of it. Thank you very much.